Hello everyone, this is Southern Bell Whisper. I hope you all are doing well this evening. I am really excited about this video. I love tags, you guys. I love when my favorite ASM artists make tag videos like the book tag and this tag which is going to be the Cozy Autumn tag. I was just trying to think about what type of video I would like to make for you guys because I got off work early today. Um, uh, the day before yesterday, I had to stay from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. and they're really cracking down on overtime, so they let me go a few hours early today. So I came home and at a, a edible, just so you guys don't worry about me. I don't want you guys worry to worry about me in any way. Um, I'm not necessarily a pothead. I do love smoking marijuana and eating edibles, but I don't do it all the time. And as you guys can understand, it's been a very stressful week for Virginia and our Appalachian Mountain states. <sighs> but I'm going to try not to think about that during this tag. That's why I've been so, so upset and so depressed this past week. I knew I couldn't make a video for you guys. I mean, I've been crying. I've been praying. I just didn't want you guys to see me like that because being sick with MRSA. I wouldn't say I had an epiphany, but I realized that, you know, today could be my, today could be my last day on earth. Do I want to spend it be, you know, worrying and fearing about my life? No, I do not. I want to take the world by the balls and make it my bitch, okay? So, <laughs> my mom will have a heart attack when she heard that, but I'm just saying. And yes, I'm a Christian. I believe in God and I cuss. Boo hoo. Who cares? I got inked in my skin, you guys. I know God loves me. So, but let's get into this tag video, shall we? Before I go on too many tangents, you guys. But I will give you guys a little chance to do something for me. Uh, send me some good thoughts. I know you guys are already praying for me, but um, let's just say if it goes the way I want it to, I will do a get ready with me video for you guys, and it will be the best darn get ready with me video I've ever made for you guys. But if it doesn't go my way, then I won't. So, I just can't tell you guys what it is in this video because there are still people watching my videos that I don't want watching my videos. So, I'll just say that for you guys and I'll make it private. I'll make the Get Ready With Me private and I'll send codes to everyone. Yeah, that's how I'll do it. Yeah, I got this. But, like I said, I love tag videos. I love when my favorite ASM artist uh, make tag videos, like the book tag and uh, ASMR tag and this tag, which is going to be the cozy autumn tag. I didn't even know that this tag existed. I found it on a whim. I just searched autumn tag in the search bar and it channel, hold on, the channel name is Fig Burry Witch ASMR, which I didn't know her channel existed, you guys. What rock has, have I been sleeping under? I don't know, but I watched her video, her autumn tag, passed out last night. 
probably going to watch it again tonight and pass out again because that was the best sleep I've ever got. So, I'm so glad I found her channel. But I really like the questions. I love the questions in this tag. And you're going to get to know a lot more about me. And I love that. So, thank you, Vic Burry Witch ASMR, for creating this tag. Seriously. So, let's get started. Number one. What is your fondest memory of autumn? I've discussed this with you guys on other videos. This house, 1998, no, 1998, 1999 until I was 14. This house, decorated for Halloween, having my brothers over to go, and we would go um, trick or treating throughout the town. We go to everybody's house. And that makes me so sad, you guys, that kids do not trick-or-treat like they used to. It makes me so sad. Like, the kids are like, I can just get, uh, you know, candy from, you know, after Halloween for 95% off at the dollar store. And I'm like, when did it change? You know, I loved going trick-or-treating with my brothers as a, as a 7, 8. We would go to my grandma's house. She, her house is right down the road, and uh, we trick or treat at her house. I got pictures. I am going to find Halloweens at this house throughout the years because I know I have pictures of it, and I will show that in a future video. I promise you guys. But yes, the Halloweens at this house were the best I ever had. Number two, if you could bottle and wear an autumn scent as a perfume, what would it be? Okay, all right, you guys, this is a new obsession for me. I got this candle at my local grocery store, and it was expensive for a candle, but not by Bath and Body standards, but it was still pretty expensive. You guys, I, I lit this and I closed the door to my bedroom and an hour later I came back in and my room smelled like a cinnamon bun factory, like the good part of the cinnamon, the cinnamon, the, the middle ooey gooey part, that's what it smells like, but it's called Hot Buns Cinnamon Sugar Cream. And it's called Our Own Candle Company. And it's a soy candle. I love soy candles. And it's a 100-hour burn, you guys. I don't like this candle unless I, I'm cleaning my room or something special. This is probably one of the best candles I've ever had. It smells just like a, cin a cinnamon one, you guys. I keep wanting to say Cinnabon. It was worth every cent to me. That is one of the strongest scents, candle scents. I love strong candle scents like this because it permeates throughout the room and it just, oh. But it also makes me really hungry for cin uh, cinnamon, bu cinnamon buns now. But, oh gosh, it smells so good, you guys. But yes, if I could bottle that scent right there, I'd be a happy camper. And I'm sorry, I should have turned my light on, you guys. The sun just went behind a cloud. Once again, I have not charged my LED light. Stupid, stupid, stupid. But, I mean, maybe the ambiance got a little bit warmer. If you guys like it, I'm okay with it. But yes, if I could bottle that scent right there, Mm -hmm. See, I've had to stop washing uh, myself with any scented uh, uh, wash soap. I've had to wash with just antibacterial soap. I've had to come to the conclusion that my skin is just 
very sensitive and I miss that I miss that only on my legs though because I know I got that venous stasis in my legs but like my top half you know it's good to go I can do the sugar scrub and everything it won't break out or anything it's my legs but um, yeah that, that sucks I love all the scented lotions and all the scented washes and I can't do it anymore on my legs okay number three name two of your favorite books to read in the autumn season you guys I am trying so hard to get through pumpkin spice cafe I am trying so hard but it's so predictable it's so predictable it's the sta same story that I've read a thousand times and I know a lot of people like books like that but <laughs> So, and I want to like it. There are parts that actually make me laugh out loud, but it's just so freaking cringy. How they're like, oh, he's so hot, he's so hot, like over and over and over. It's like, okay, we get it, he's hot, okay, all right. But I'm trying to get through it because I've heard that the Cinnamon Bun Cafe is better. So I am trying, you guys. But I do have a couple books with me that I got in the mail today. I love to read true crime during the Halloween fall months. That's why I really miss Soft ASMR's true crime videos. I really do miss her true crime videos, you guys. I, I have a whole playlist of her true crime videos. Um, and if no other ASMR video will suffice, I always fall asleep to that playlist I don't know it, does that make me weird I don't think so a lot of people love true crime and I love um, true crime ASMR or ASMR addiction I swear if I got her name wrong I'm gonna be kicking myself later but I am going to show you the books that I got in the mail today I didn't realize this was hardback okay I've heard a lot of great things about this book it's called I'll be gone in the dark one woman's obsessive search for the golden state killer yes I searched on Google I was like the best uh, true crime books and this was top 10 let's see what the cover says a master for a masterful true crime account of the Golden State Killer, the elusive serial rapist turned murderer who terrorized California for over a decade. From Michelle McNerma, the gifted journalist who died tragically while investigating the case. Whew. You'll be silent forever and I'll be gone. I'm still on an antibiotic, you guys believe it or not, and it makes my stomach, I hate it, I hate it. Over the course of more than 10 years, a mysterious and violent predator committed 50 sexual assaults in Northern California before moving south where he perpetrated 10 sadistic in 1986, he disappeared, eluded capture by multiple police forces and some of the best detectives in the area. Three decades later, Michelle McNerma, a true crime journalist who created the popular website True Crime, True, True crime Diary, was determined to find the violent psychopath she called the Golden State Killer. Michelle poured over police reports interviewed victims and embed herself in the online communities that were as obsessed with the case as she was. At the time of the crimes, the Golden State Killer was bet between the ages of 18 and 30, Caucasian and athletic, capable of vaulting tall fences. He always wore a mask. After choosing his victims, he favored suburban couples. He often entered their homes when no one was there studying family pictures, mastering the layouts. 
He attacked while he slept, usually using a flashlight to awaken and blind them. Though they could not recognize him, his victims recalled his voice, a guttural whisper through clenched teeth, abrupt and threatening. I'll be gone in the dark. The masterpiece McNairma was writing at the time of her son's death offers an atmospheric snapshot of a moment in American history and a chilling account of a criminal mastermind and the wreckage she left behind. It is also a portrait of a woman's obsession in her unflagging pursuit of the truth. Framed by introduction from Gillian Flynn, oh my goodness, and afterward by Nick Nairis' husband, Peyton Oswald. What? The book was completed by Michelle's lead re researcher and a college colleague. Wow. I just got curious about this, you guys. I've heard a few things about the Golden State Killer. one you guys I think I hate DNR DNRing books you guys but for my own sanity I think I need to start this one tonight it's already grabbed me you guys I met two customers the other day in my lane I was checking them out and they were both going to school and she uh, one girl said she was going to be a substance abuse counselor and the other girl said she was in criminal justice, you guys. Oh, that's like my dream job. I would love to work in criminal justice. I mean, I love, I love the job I'm working now. But, like, it amazes me. Criminal justice does. It does. I love when they catch the bad guys. Okay, and the second book that I'm excited to read. You know, when I say excited, I don't mean like, oh, I'm going to be happy. Oh, cool, he cut his head off. All they found with his, was his head, huh? No, I don't mean like that. I mean, I love a good true crime book. I can't help myself. I just find it so interesting, disturbing, interesting, heartbreaking, all the emotions, you guys. But this is the second book that I got. I've never read the book. I've heard about the case, the case of um, Adam Walsh, but I've never read the book by John Walsh. If you don't remember John Walsh, he was on America's Most Wanted. You guys remember that show? I've, I've heard a lot about the Adam Walsh case. A lot. It's, oh, you guys. The host of America's Most Wanted, John Walsh, tells for the first time the full story of the 1981 abduction and murder of his six-year-old son, Adam. This is the heartbreaking chronicle of John Walsh's transformation from grieving father to full-time activist and the infuriating conspiracy of events that have kept America's number one crime fighter from obtaining justice and closure for himself and his family. From the day Adam disappeared from a mall in Hollywood, Florida, John Walsh faced a local police department better equipped to track stolen cars and missing children, and a criminal justice system that would work against him in unimaginable ways. Outraged but determined, he ultimately enlarged the search for Adam's killer into an exhaustive battle on behalf of all missing and abused children, beginning with his efforts to put missing children's faces on milk cartons. Today, John Walsh continues to fight for le legislative change and public awareness, driven by his own personal tragedy. Tears of Rage is the story of a true American hero, a man who challenged the system in the name of his son. You guys. Okay. I might have to read that one first. My God, you guys. They really grab you from the, from the synopsis of the book. Oh, gosh, you guys. 
can I imagine? Those are the two books that I'm most excited to read this fall season. Okay. Number four, what is your favorite fall drink? That is, uh, sorry, I love eggnog. Usually that's the end of October, the first of November. I guess it could be considered a winter drink, eggnog is, but I love eggnog. I love apple cider. Um, I love that, I told you guys, that caramel crunch drink from Starbucks. My friend, my coworker, I thought she was supposed to come in at 12 today, and she didn't show up until 12.30, but I was the one in the wrong. She was supposed to be there at 12.30, but I knew I was supposed to leave at 1. I was about to have a fit. But uh, she had the caramel crunch frappe with two shots of oh my gosh oh my gosh I will think about you guys and it will it will come to me I promise and I'm also going to bring the microphone closer because I do not know what that noise is uh, espresso two shots of espresso she put into it she made me so thirsty for one you guys I was like yeah thanks for the invite there buddy no not really she's the one that got me the job Angie the one I told you guys about like I owe her and she worked a lot of my shift a lot of my shifts when I was sick so I owe her a shit ton of, of gratitude but I kind of had a little bit of a meltdown today. I'm not gonna lie, you know. I was like, you know, they gotta stick, stick by their word, you know. I don't care if you're left by, you know, the other co worker. I don't care if you're left by yourself. They need to stick by their word. I was being a bitch, you guys. But I told you guys, I haven't been myself lately. I have not been myself. This is the first real day where I feel like I'm, I'm coming back, you know. But, but yeah. Those are some of my favorite fall drinks. Yeah. Because hot chocolate and eggnog, they're really considered winter drinks. I'm more of a iced coffee gal during the uh, fall months. N number five. In three words, describe how you feel on a rainy day in the fall. You guys... Can I just be honest with you guys? Hurricane Helene took that love away from me. She took that love of rainy days and autumn away from me. Like those used to be my favorite days. I would sit on the porch. I would have a good book in my hand. The rain's coming down. And it's just the perfect autumn day. I used to feel tranquility, calmness, safety. Not after Hurricane Helene, I'm not. I've been praying to God because the past few days they've been saying we were supposed to get some rain. But I've been praying and thank God the rain has been held at bay, you guys. Because if we got more rain, but yeah, Hurricane Helene took that away from me. Now all I feel, feel is fear and heartbreak. It's been hard for me mentally, you guys. I know I'm not trying to sound selfish, okay? I know so many people have it so much worse than me but being an empath and watching the devastation you guys mentally is I've been in a bad place until recently when I went back to work you know when I went back to work and just lost myself in work I'm actually feeling like myself a little bit more each day but my heart goes out to every single person 
that has been affected by Hurricane Helene. When my power came back on Sunday, I had TikTok back. And I had been watching the news. I didn't know what was going on in North Carolina, you guys. And I just laid there for an hour watching those TikToks and sobbing my fucking eyes out, you guys. It hurt me so bad. But that's why I tell myself, Kelly, it could be worse. Because it could. We are up on a hill. Thank God we are up on a hill. Because down below us, you guys, we are very fortunate that we only dealt with not having power. That's it. But my heart is with the people that lost everything. I just want you guys to know that. I'm sorry. I'm trying. Okay. But. I'm really sorry, you guys. Anyways. Okay, number six. Have you ever visited a corn maze? I don't like mazes, you guys. Mazes scare me. I get major anxiety. I do not like mirror rooms. I do not like mazes. I do not like corn mazes, you guys. I do not. It gives me major anxiety. Like, no, I don't do corn mazes. I'm sorry. Pumpkin patch. We have a huge, like, acres full of pumpkin pumpkins on uh, Walt Furnace Road. That's what we call it. Uh, it's a dirt road that you drive down, but the farmers, instead of planting corn, have planted pumpkins, and it's just miles of pumpkins, you guys. It is beautiful. I love pumpkin patches. And have you ever been apple picking? No, but that's a good date idea. Number seven, what is the best flavor of autumn? That is hard. That's too hard, man. Vanilla, maple, hazelnut, apple. Sorry, I can't choose. I can't choose, you guys. Caramel. Like, I can go on and on about all my favorite flavors of fall. I could, but... But I can't choose. I just can't choose. Number eight, favorite autumn or Halloween themed song. I don't know if this is considered an autumn song, but for some reason it makes me think of autumn. It makes me think of fall in Virginia, and that is Fields of Gold by Stink. I don't know if that's considered an autumn or a Halloween song, but every time I hear it, it just takes me back those days in the fall sit, uh, spent watching football with my brothers spending time with my brothers and I, I think of Joe a lot when I when I hear Fields of Gold by Sting now um, Thriller of course by my, Michael Jackson love Thriller and I love um, the Monster Mash still to this day I'm 33 years old and I still love the Monster Mash fight me <laughs> I'm joking but <clears throat> number nine is favorite cozy TV show uh, I've been really into I still haven't finished Emily in Paris I need to finish that I need to finish the third season and get to the fourth season I don't know what's wrong with me you guys I've just been uh, well for one thing we haven't had power since well we got our power back on Sunday and then I started work and then I've just been enjoying having power again but uh, I gotta get on that you guys I gotta finish Emily in Paris and friends favorite show of all time and Shits Creek I love Shits Creek you guys you know they're selling the complete series for like under twenty dollars on eBay like I'm tempted to get it on DVD now that we have that DVD player that we can hook, hook up to our TV downstairs. I would love to watch that series again. I 
me and my ex started watching it together. And then when my ex found out that David in the show, my favorite character, was gay, he stopped watching it with me. He said, I'm not going to watch some faggy TV show. Yeah, you guys already know what dick my ex was, okay? Yeah. So I watched it by myself. I knew my mom was watching it too. And we would, we would call each other and talk about it. But I would love to, to watch the whole thing over again with her. Like, I would. I love Shit's Creek. Number 10. Favorite spooky or Halloween themed movie. Practical Magic. I love Practical Magic. I love Hocus Pocus. I love the original 1978 Halloween, the first one, because the ambiance, mostly. I'm not much into a slasher like Chucky and Freddy and Michael. I'm not much into those kinds of movies because my dad watched them with me when I was a kid and he kind of scarred me for life. So, But I love the ambiance in the first Halloween movie. Uh, but yeah, I'm more of a kitty Halloween movie you got, uh, or Halloween watcher. I also loved uh, Hubie Halloween with uh, Adam Sandler. That was a good one. Okay, number 11. Describe how you would spend the perfect autumn day. Sitting on the porch, just watching the leaves change. That's what I love to do. I would just... I just love to sit on the porch and watch the leaves change in the mountain. And they're changing. You guys, they're changing. With my earphones in, listening to my new playlist that I just created. Don't ask. Don't ask. You guys, don't ask. <laughs> but yes, the perfect coziness. Have my earphones in, reading a book, just enjoying sitting on the per porch and uh, watching the water recede. Thank you, God. The water receded. Just pray we get no more rain. But that's been... It's still... It still caused so much destruction, you guys. I can't get into it. But yeah, on the porch. Any cozy time is spent on the porch. Twelve. For you, what signals the start of the autumn season? You guys, I want to tell you, this is the first autumn I'm spending here in 14 years. Yeah. Actually, longer with this house. I was 14 when we left here, so almost 20 years. So this is the first autumn. I'll be spending in this house since I was 14, you guys. But what signals the autumn season for me is when you wake up and there's dew on the ground. There's dew on the car. And you're and it's a little chilly outside. Not chilly enough for, for a sweater, but just chilly enough. I probably sound like that girl in Miss Congeality. But I, and then uh, the changing of the leaves, of course. And just, I feel it. I'm such a fall gal, you guys. That I feel it in my soul. I know. I'm like, yep, today's autumn. I can feel it in the air. <laughs> okay, number 13. When is the last time you jumped into a pile of leaves? From what I remember, you guys, it's been a long freaking time. A long time. From what I remember, my mother would say that was a bad idea to jump in the leaves because I didn't know what was in that pile of leaves. She said there could be dog poo in those leaves. There could be a needle in those leaves. Like, I don't know if I've ever jumped into a pile of leaves. <laughs> oh, Mama, I love you. You know I love you, but I get it. I do. Because I was always a sick kid and she was just trying to protect me. I don't I don't hold a grudge against her on that, but I don't know if I've ever jumped in leaves before, you guys. Maybe I should change that this year. You think I should change that? 
I would have to go to the neighbor's house to jump in the leaves because they're the one with the trees, but they wouldn't think it's weird, right? Yeah. I know. I can't remember a, of a memory where I've ever jumped in leaves. Ever. Yeah, I'm sad. I know. Number 14. Have you ever carved a pumpkin before? What did you carve into it? The only time I ever remember carving a pumpkin was with my dad in Surfside Beach when I was five. And from what I remember, it was a regular jack-o'-lantern. You know, triangle eyes, a weird mouth, you know, just a regular. Um, but from what I remember, we have might had a few here because he he planted pumpkins in his garden so we might we might have had a few uh carved pumpkins here but i just can't remember you guys it sucks i don't have a really good long-term memory at all number 15 show us your favorite item of clothing to wear in autumn you guys um just pretty much ruby ruby shirts uh sweaters I wish I had my sweater with me. I would show it to you guys. But there is somebody that is designed to mow the lawn. Sorry. But I would show it to you guys, but it's downstairs. I'm sorry. But I've showed you guys the sweater with the hood that I just got, the blue one. I love Rumi sweaters. And Rumi shirts. Anything Rumi. Anything Rumi. And let's see. That's pretty much it. Earrings. Been wearing earrings every day at work since I got my earrings. Okay. Do you decorate for Halloween and autumn? Yes, this year I did. Uh, we got some scarecrows, little tiny scarecrows to put in the ground, like kind of like Christmas lights you do with uh, LED Christmas lights. Uh, we put some scarecrows in the ground, and we put those ghosts I showed you guys, the orange ones, up. And we had a nice little Howie mat, like it's perfect. It's not over the top, it's perfect. I love it. But yes, this is the first Halloween we've decorated in, since we moved from here. Yeah. I don't remember ever decorating in Hillsville when we lived in Hillsville. When we moved from here, we moved to Hillsville, Virginia. But the only time I remember decorating was here. I told you, I told you guys, this house, it's special. Uh, number 17, what do you do to celebrate Halloween? Nothing, I'll probably be working on Halloween. I'm hoping I'll be working on Halloween. Uh, I hope they make it to where we can give, like, candy to the kids. I don't know. Maybe that's not a good idea. Those kids get really crazy sometimes. Um, but I think that would be fun to do if I work on Halloween. But, you know, eat candy. Watch a, watch a scary movie, maybe. Watch Practical Magic. Nothing, nothing really special. Number 18, what was your best Halloween costume? Oh, man. Now, that's the thing. I can remember uh, the costumes that I, for, uh, that I wore for Halloween growing up. I loved when I dressed as a pumpkin and went to the Halloween party at my church. And my mom had painted my face orange and black striped. I mean, we went all out on that costume, and it was a pumpkin costume, and I won for best costume that night. I loved, I loved that pumpkin, you guys. It was a, it was perfect. It was great. And then also Juliet. There was a Juliet, I call myself Juliet, costume that I wore for a long time, and I also won for that one as well. What is your dream Halloween costume? Anything Harry Potter. I, even if I had to play, even if I had to dress up as Hagrid, I would. If I wouldn't be believable as Hermione, I'd, I'd dress up as Hagrid. I don't care. Hagrid's awesome. Or uh, what's his girlfriend's name in the books? Olympia, right? Yeah, I'd dress up as her. Now I'm imagining it in my head. 
dressing up as Hagrid and Olympia with God stop it. You guys, I'm gonna spill the beans. Okay. But yeah, that's that's pretty much I, I don't like really I, and I'm not judging here, but I don't like like really skimpy Halloween costumes. Um, uh, like I told you guys, I don't show a lot of skin with the what I wear or anything. So I've never really been the kind of gal that wore like Catwoman and leather and uh, sexy angel and sexy this and sexy nurse and sexy that. But I've always been more, I guess you could call old fashioned that way. But I'm not judging. Just, show, just so you know. Yeah. Just just so you guys know. 20. Do you like to bake during the fall? What autumn baking do you like to eat and why? Actually, I am going to start baking this Friday. I am off and my good friend Miss Paula has uh, talked me into uh, baking something for work because I've been killing it at work, you guys. Okay, can we get into my work a little bit? My first day was the 27th. I told you guys it was rough day, watching the storm, not knowing if Robert was going to come back. It was just a rough day. But there was one day where this kid couldn't get to work. Like, literally, he could not get to work. His road washed out so I got there at 8 a.m. and Robert was walking by he was like hey Kelly how you doing and I was like I said I'm probably gonna make a very big mistake but I think I'm about to uh, offer to close for them tonight cuz uh, we'll call him Keith Keith is stuck he can't he literally cannot come to work and I was like, I started thinking about it. I was like, you know what? I've done 12 hours before as a CNA. I'll be fine. Got through that. But you guys, listen to this. Both managers, okay, and I'm not selfish, okay? And I'm not trying to toot my own horn. It takes a team to get through each day. It doesn't take just one person. It takes a whole team to work together and love working together together to get through every single day it takes a team not there's no I and T right but so that day I stayed from there's a going to be electric truck there's a lot of electric trucks going by where they're trying to um, I'm one of the lucky ones I uh, the people down the road from me don't even have their power yet I mean, heart, oh anyways but the day that I stayed for 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. which was two nights ago uh, my boss was like Kelly I am so glad you're back la 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 our cells have been shit and la 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 and I was like what do you mean she said Kelly okay they last year we made $3,500 in sale in sales but they gave us a smaller budget which of 2900 really it's important to hit the budget to go over the budget that they give us but it's like a miracle if you get both so that first night that I worked that shift we made three thousand one hundred and forty two dollars and so we beat the budget that day and $35 in roundup money. And then yesterday, you guys listen to this. Yesterday, around 3 o'clock, I worked 8, 1130 to 8. Around 3 o'clock, she starts sending people home. She was like, uh, is that video going off? Oh, well. Anyways, uh, she starts sending people home. She said, Kelly, our sales are down, like real down. She said, we have a budget today of, uh, what was it, 3019 So, three three oh one nine budget. 
and last year we made 3100 she said there ain't no way we're going to hit that she said we'll be lucky if we hit the budget for today you you guys I don't know how we did it I do not know how we freaking did it from 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. until those doors locked we jumped from eleven hundred dollars to three thousand four hundred and thirty two dollars so not only did we beat the budget for the day we beat last year's as well and became number one in the district the number one goodwill in the district I thought I was going to cry, you guys. Like, it made me so freaking happy. But, like, you know, me with compliments. People say stuff like that to me. And I'm like, happy birthday, you know. Like, the the thing that I do when I'm proud of myself is I start getting, like, a little misty-eyed. I'm like, no freaking way. It's like I don't believe in myself or something sometimes. It's like I don't believe in myself. Because they were like, Kelly... How do you do it? She said, how did we jump from $1,100 at 3 o'clock to 3400 And it was, sorry, 3446 at 7 And $38 in rounding. You guys, I will say this. I just love what I do. If I'm a perfectionist, if I'm OCD, if I seem like I just want to be a people pleaser, then so be it. But I put my whole heart and soul into what I do. And it shows. And I'm proud of myself. And I will say that. I'm very proud of myself. I don't know what sent me, what questions sent me on that little tangent, you guys. Oh my gosh. Oh, my friend Paula uh, talked me into baking something on Friday. Sorry, it was a baking question, you guys. Sorry. She talked me into baking something on Friday, and I haven't baked in so long, you guys. But how hard can it be? But yeah, that's what I plan to do on Friday. Because Saturday I work. You guys, oh gosh, Saturday is going to be a big day for me be thinking get ready with me video be thinking it um but i want to get back into baking you guys like seriously this is my favorite time of year i eat enough baked goods so why can't i make it i just need to believe in myself uh what uh, autumn uh do you like to eat oh gosh uh, those pumpkin spice rolls the little debbie ones oh my gosh and here I was saying I don't like pumpkin spice <sighs> and uh, you know uh, the rolls they have like a red velvet and a carrot I think you know the rolls and uh, oatmeal cookies the iced ones my niece got me hungry for those oh, I don't have no money until Friday thanks <laughs> but seriously I love those cookies uh, gosh just so me to think of you guys I love baked goods let me just say that number 21 what is your favorite Halloween candy anything Reese's love Reese's when, where it pertains to chocolate I also love Skittles M&M's uh, I love chocolate any chocolate Oh, I love candy corn, you guys. I am a candy corn fan. Yes, I love candy corn. And black licorice. I love black uh, licorice jelly beans. Uh, let me think, 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 think. Airheads. Oh, I love airheads. Uh, and yeah, that's pretty much it. But I hate those little uh, star, uh, 
what are they called, the little pill looking things that I, I've hated since birth, what are they called, star something, I forget, star kissed or something, oh god, I hate those things, uh, okay, number 22, do you have any yearly traditions or rituals that you look forward to, now I do, decorating, maybe going to go see Joker 2, I just don't know how to keep my mouth shut, you guys. But I'd love to go to the movies more during the autumn months. It's always the best movies from from now into December. Like, all the best movies re release. All the best movies release. So, really excited about Joker 2, you guys. Oh my gosh, I need to rent the first one and watch it again. Or find it on... Uh, one of the apps or something. I need to watch it again and then, because that's what I did with Inside Out too. I watched the first one again just to refresh my memory. But I think Joker Two is going to be fucking awesome, and I want to go see it so bad, so bad. Okay, uh, going to the movies, decorating, going to apple picking, going to. Uh, pumpkin patches, more pumpkin patches, maybe getting over my fear of mazes, maybe. Number 23 is your favorite autumn con color, orange. That's my brother Joe's favorite color, and orange, uh, red, uh, orangey red, <laughs> orangey red, uh, orange, red, purple, green is that autumn color like a dark green mossy green and that's pretty much it number 24 if you were to have a familiar like a witch what animal would it be oh my goodness that is so hard you guys it'd be a toss-up between a phoenix a cat and a dog like, I cannot choose between those three. Those are my three favorite animals ever where it, pertain, uh, where it pertains to protecting me and, and loving me unconditionally, except for the phoenix. But phoenixes are special to me. Rising from the ashes. I love that. But yeah, that's a toss-up. Number 25... What are you thankful for? I am thankful that we that we were gosh, it just everything when I say how grateful I am that none of us were hurt, it just makes me feel like I'm so being selfish by saying it. But I am thankful that nobody I love was seriously hurt and during Hurricane Helene, I am thankful for my job. I'm thankful for my family. I'm thankful for my home. And most of all, I am thankful to my God. I owe him everything, you guys. And I am not, I know there are people at like false prophets out there, but I, and I, and being a hundred percent with you, I owe God everything. I owe Him my life. So I, I am thankful for His love for me, because it's gotten me through so much. And I'm thankful for you guys. I am thankful I still have my channel. Like through everything, you guys through a abuse, through toxicity, through drugs, through jobs, through relationships. I've had this channel for almost 12 years. I'm so thankful for this channel and this community of people and the friends that I've met through this community. I am so thankful. But I love you guys. Wow, this video was almost an hour. Wow. But uh, wouldn't it be horrible if I looked down the microphone was off this whole time? Oh my god. 
But anyways, I love you guys, and I will be talking to you soon. And thank you again to Figbury, uh, which ASMR, for creating this tag. I had a lot of fun, but I love you guys, and I will talk to you soon. Alright, bye-bye.